Thanks everyone for, uh, for being here uh, today. Um, so for those of you who have uh, strong attention to detail, you might have seen that we've changed the, the topic for today uh, a little bit. Uh, we ended up tweaking the slides yesterday with Audley, <laughs> and we're, we're going to be focusing slightly more on the, um, a specific use case around in-app messaging uh, with, um, with the presentation to, today. So I'm here with, uh, I'm here with Audley Horning, uh, who's an uh, app marketing specialist at uh, Albert Heinz. So maybe by, by hand, uh, who in the audience is familiar with uh, Albert Heinz, which will help us, yeah, of course, Niels. <laughs> Niels is an audience. Uh, you team, you so. are too? Yeah, Hi. so three people. So we'll, we'll spend a bit of time, obviously, explaining who Abia Hanch is and uh, talking about the, the business is a, one of the biggest um, Dutch supermarket company. Um, and I will also be um, introducing briefly uh, Batch and, and, and uh, who we are and what we, uh, and, and what we do. Um, so the, the agenda for, the, for today is going to be uh, basically three parts, quick introduction, Batch and Abba Heinz will explain uh, what the businesses do. Um, we will then dive into Albert Heinz uh, mobile app strategy. Uh, the Netherlands is a very interesting country in terms of uh, uh, penetra penetration rates for, for, for digital and, and, and mobile, but some of the highest uh, penetration rates in the world, so a very advanced country. And then we'll dive into one specific use case around how uh, Audley Steam is boosting the app performance uh, via the use of uh, of in app uh, in app messaging, does it does it sound good? Sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a plan. Okay, cool, excellent. Um, so quick quick forward about about Batch. Mm. So we're we're a French company based in Paris. We've been in the market for eight years. So I'm assuming very few people in the in the room uh, know us. Uh, even though we started um, attending those APS events more regularly than in the past. So we're very briefly customer engagement platform. Uh, we help our clients centralize their user data, create unique profiles, uh, and then communicate with those audiences through email, uh, SMS, push notifications, in-app messaging, uh, web push, all of the all of those channels that, that marketers like you guys uh, use. So eight years in the market, we have roughly 350 clients across Europe, mostly in France and Germany, uh, a few ones in the UK now, and, and, and a few others globally. I'm one of the co-founders, by the way. Uh, roughly 100 people and focusing on mostly on large accounts and pretty big, uh, big scale-ups. The platform has a few core differentiators. I'm not going to bore you with them uh, today, but we have a product that is very powerful and also simple to use. We'll show you a few, um, a, a few um, wireframes and we'll show you the interface briefly. Uh, it's all in one, so as a marketer, is, you know, the, the platform lets you centralize all your user data and get access to all your channels, and it's very powerful with personalization, as we will show you in the, um, in the use case. Um, and also, we're the only, we're, we're the only ca company in our space to, be actually, to actually hail from Europe. We store all of our user data on physical uh, European soil. Um, all our competitors use cloud, uh, public cloud. Um, uh, and we, we don't we do Bermuda, so that's one of the one of the differentiators as well of the of the platform. Um, having said that, I'm just going to hand over to uh, Audley to start talking about hardware Heinz. Um, maybe can you walk us through before we dive into the, the mobile app strategy, maybe the the, the broader business who yeah. is Albert Heinz? Yeah, of course. Um, well, only I think one person in this room knows Albert Heinz, so let me briefly explain uh, what Albert Heinz is and uh, what what it's. Well, yeah, well, what it is in a Dutch market, uh, because as you can see, we are the largest supermarket chain in uh, the Netherlands. And uh, with having said that, we have over 1,200 stores in the Netherlands. Um, and uh, but we also have a website, an app where we talk about later, but also online shopping delivery. So it's um, a lot going on, like an omnichannel supermarket. Um, but I think, to be honest, most of all, like one of our core beliefs is filling uh, plates of six, six million households every, every night. Day? So that's a yeah. lot. Okay. Yeah. And, and so you guys are known to have one of the most advanced loyalty program and in, in, at least in, in Europe, uh, powered by a lot of, uh, a lot of tech. Can, can you maybe set the stage as well uh, around how the, the overall Albert uh, loyalty program works? So that will help contextualize for what we show yeah. afterwards. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, well, I think it's important to understand that as we have a lot of stores and we have uh, online sales as well, it's on, uh, important to understand the, that we have mass promotions, like it's for ev there for everyone. And on the other hand of the spectrum, we have personalized promotions. And that's where the interesting part is, because uh, the personalized promotions are uh, only offered in the app, which yeah. I will talk about later. Um, so that makes the app already a very crucial part of our technology um, yeah, uh, possibilities, solutions that we offer. Um, but you also wanted to... Yeah, I just wanted to have a quick focus on you know, the, the tech investments. So you guys are known for having invested a lot on, in, in this area. Yeah. Like a huge team, to technical team working on the, the, the internal of the, of the loyalty program. Yeah, yeah that was is indeed a nice thing to mention that um, I think what we discussed shortly before is um, you asked me how big the tech department is yeah. at our side, but actually I think at, uh, at our company it's uh, like over 125,000 people working, but all the marketing people and all the tech people and all the data people, they're all, all working with tech. So you cannot say like, oh, marketing people are just like campaign and they, they also have to understand our uh, tech <laughs> platforms and how we work. So that I think is interesting. Okay, cool, excellent. Um, so from from there, we're going to focus a little bit on obviously uh, the the mobile uh, the mobile app strategy of Albert Heijn. So you know, f fitting the the broader um, topics of interest of of, of the of the APS uh, the APS crowd. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, so the Netherlands is one of the most advanced countries in Europe in terms of uh, you know penetration rate. Do you want to talk a little bit about the the the, the market? It's a small but very yeah. Very uh, interesting. Very yeah. yeah, interesting market. And as you can maybe already see on the slides, like um, I think the app is really an answer that we give to what we see in the slides. And what do we see? Like uh, to 83 percent of Dutch shoppers, so that's a lot, um, use a supermarket app. So there is a lot of opportunity that there is, as you can imagine. And uh, also, like almost 80% say that they want to have the convenience of like using the app um, at every stage in their customer journey. So if they are like lazy on the couch and they think like, oh, I want to do my grocery shopping, okay, then the app is there, so they can use it like at all stages. And um, I think what's also um, super interesting to um, say, and what we also will talk about later, is. Uh, the 60% of people seek out personalized offers via our app. And we will discuss it later, but um, yeah. remember this. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, as a consequence, so you, you know, we're talking 83% penetration rate. Uh, you guys own 37% of the market. So as a consequence, you, you, end up, you and your team end up running uh, one of the country's, the, the country's biggest uh, shopping app. Can you can you maybe walk us through the yeah, the yeah. Key KPIs of that app? Yeah. Um, well, uh, slide uh, uh, what do you say? Like a snapshot of our app of the homepage of our app <laughs> on the right side. Uh, but what is of course more interesting to mention is that um, on a monthly basis, well, we ha we have 3.5 million active users. So monthly active users. Um, but what's maybe even more interesting is that our customers use our app on average three times a week. So that's a lot. And um, as you already said, we are uh, like a supermarket. So people, of course, do groceries. But in our app, we also offer recipe uh, inspiration. You can, of course, shop online, but also um, uh, activate your personalized offer. So various reasons to go into the app every, uh, uh, every week. Excellent. Cool. And, uh Oh, and oh, just, oh, there was a there was a there was a, <laughs> there was we a just found, we just found this quote. Sorry, some numbers that I forgot to correct. So we said we found this quote that said that uh, this this study from the magazine Industry Food said that Dutch people are more likely to carry thanks to your app an Albert Heijn uh, bonus gas, which is a loyalty program card, than a, a driving license. So we wanted to bring this quote to yeah. illustrate those those numbers. And, and obviously, like all of those you know, big industry players that have invested in digital in the end, uh, there's many, many benefits of running uh, a strong mobile app strategy, which is obviously better, better brand experience. Your clients have a, 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 your loyalty program on the go all the time. And of course, I would, as we will see afterwards, the, the conversion is usually, usually higher on the app. Uh, this is something we see 
industry-wide um, across Europe, across all our clients, apps tend to uh, cater to the, the interest of the most engaged, most, most loyal clients, and in the end, it tends to boost business KPIs, um, uh, um, all, all business uh, K KPIs. Um, so we're going to dive into the use case we, um, we wanted to pr present today. So as, as I said, our platform lets our clients engage with their audience across all, all types of channels. Uh, today, we just wanted to focus on one of, one of my favorite channels, actually, in terms of, uh, what, in terms of the tactics marketers can, can apply, which is in-app messaging. So you're obviously familiar with, with mobile. Um, you know mobile is well known for usually for push notifications messages coming from outside of the app and, and um, uh, having users come back to the app when they're not browsing it. And app messaging on the other side um, is, a, is a technology that works from inside the app. Um, so it's going to be triggered pretty much similarly. It's going to be um, targeted and then, and then activated in the app. It's usually going to be event-based, uh, triggered by specific events. And it's very powerful. Uh, because it lets uh, marketers trigger very specific messages and very contextualized messages uh, at very specific moments of the of the user uh, the user journey. That results in click through rates that are usually extremely high, between 15 and, and 25 percent uh, on on average. We'll show you some numbers afterwards as well. Where push notifications, um, when they're broadcasted to the entire user base, usually results in one one to three percent click through rate and when they're targeted between 5 and 10%. So in-app messages is very powerful from that, from that perspective. Uh, and it really lets uh, marketers send and run very tactical cam uh, campaign. Um, and maybe if yeah. uh, to add on this slide, I think, um, as you can see here, it's always fair, also very easy to create it. It's very not time conscious. It's really time effective. Yeah. And you can just, everyone here in this room can actually create this. You don't have to be a designer. Yeah, absolutely. That's one, one of the benefits of the, of the platform we build and the technology we, 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 we give to our clients. Um, part of it is, the, is obviously um, an easy to use UI where you can, as you can see on the screen, this is, so this is the batch UI where you can actually build and pre-visualize directly from your dashboard uh, enough messages that you will then run inside the, uh, inside the, uh, inside the app. Yeah, well, um, and what I also like about that, uh, like about the designs, the ones that you show, like with the picture, but they are all pre-made designs that are offered by Badge. So that made it really uh, easy for us to also uh, set up uh, a B test to see what, what fits in the customer journey. Uh, is it a picture, as you can see here, but you offer also like uh, banners with only text, so different uh, designs that are pre-made, which really makes it a lot easier for me to... <laughs> To create yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, that's that's that's. I mean, that's. Um, we've always tried to build you know product that lets marketers uh, work independently from from their tech uh, counterparts. Obviously, you know the 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 big the big hassle is always when you want to run or make modifications in in your app. You usually need to you know work with a developer. When you build email marketing campaigns, usually you work with designers. So for for mobile and with in-app messages, we try to build a product where. Um, the interface lets you combine blocks and then run messages inside the app without having to, to work with a, <coughs> yep, a, really a developer. Um, so the benefits of in-app messaging are, are, are many, but as I said, it's very easy to contextualize inside the app. It's easy to run uh, you know, experiments. Uh, you can run A-B tests pretty easily. And it's also very uh, easy to trigger inside the app with uh, uh, real-time targeting. Uh, that's one of the benefits of the platforms as well. Uh, will gather user events in real time. So when users browse the app, each uh, page to visit uh, will trigger an event on which you can uh, trigger uh, any specific in-app message, if, if, if you will. Um, maybe, Ali, you can uh, tell us a bit about the, the benefits you saw, because it was a new experimentation for you. Like yeah. you, uh, you experimented with in-app messaging for the first time with, with Dash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think um, maybe some context. Like uh, at Albert Heijn, we have multiple marketing channels. Like you probably all know, like email, television, um, all kinds of marketing. And two years ago, we uh, started uh, with in-app messaging. And uh, well, why did we do that? That's I think uh, nice to understand. Um, it, like it gave us an extra reach. So we see like a shift from people who were really active in email 
who were not really active there anymore, even like 38% uh, percent in, our, um, in our case. So that's a lot. So the inac inactive people, we could now like reach up uh, via the app. But what is also interesting is that some people don't uh, did not subscribe for our mail program, but they are they do have our app, so they use our app. So it also gave us like an additional reach, and that's of course yeah uh, super relevant for us, but also for our customers because <coughs> now it gives us the opportunity to um, actually be uh, um, communicate at a relevant channel for the for the customer, because inactive people on mails you shouldn't be sending them mails. No, absolutely, and in, in-app in messaging as well is very uh, you know, beneficial in the sense that it doesn't necessarily on one end require the, the um, it, it's not, um, you don't have to require um, opt-in consent through iOS or Android, uh, as it is the case for push notification, for example. What we see with push notification is that on average on iOS, uh, you will see opt-in rates as high as 50, 55%. Uh, industry, industry-wide, so you're always missing on usually half of your app your population. Uh, In-app messaging, on the other hand, uh, doesn't require consent. It just appears inside the app. Uh, it lets you reach 100% um, of your active audience. Um, and what we saw with Albert, Albert Heinz is that uh, it helped you regain rich, reachability uh, uh, over 400,000 users that were actually visiting the app, using the app on a regular basis, not uh, weren't reachable through other channels, whether push notification or email. <coughs> and we're all of a sudden uh, reachable via um, NF messaging. Yeah, yeah, and I think uh, uh, also in addition to that, uh, it's also part of our mobile first strategy because maybe as a lot of people here know, like uh, third party restrictions are uh, increasing every day. So it's harder to get the right data. And uh, so therefore we want to invest in our own channel. So we are uh, in control of the data and we are in control of the channel. And that makes in-app uh, a very um, interesting solution to, uh, to, to look at. Yeah, sure. And in general, we end up working with companies that, you know, and, and, and the current data privacy and sort of end of a third party cookie environment want to regain control over their first party data. So regain control over uh, opt-in data and, and which clients they can contact at which time, what kind of data they store. So obviously in-app messaging and all other channels are a big, big topic of interest um, for a lot of companies in the market uh, these days. Um, from there, having explained uh, what in-app messaging is, uh, we're diving into the last part of the presentation, which is the actual use case. Um, so we've set the stage on who is all behind. We talked about the loyalty strategy at, at large, the mobile, the mobile app strategy. And now Ali's going to walk you through what is what the, the bonus box is. So something that I also discovered by uh, starting to work with the with the group. It's one of the key features, uh, the key engagement and monetization feature in the app uh, and supermarket app. Uh, so Ali will explain how it works, and then we'll show you how we drove um, interest and reactivation to this feature uh, via in-app messaging. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm actually curious because you know Albert Hein. You said, do you? Do you like know the bonus box or? Okay. <laughs> oh, you never use that. Oh, you do or oh, no? Yeah. yeah, you guys do. Yeah. I do use the app, but I have an issue because the app is only in Dutch. Oh. So I'm really, I'm literally using two phones and opening Google Translate with the camera. Oh. Okay, there is an opportunity. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to ask because you said you have like. 3.5 million new users every month, and I mean Netherlands is one of uh, most export-friendly countries, I think. Yeah, Imagine good, good point. That number of no. people that are talking probably only yeah. in English, so. No, I think you have a really uh, good point because I can imagine that recipes are also quite hard to follow sometimes. Notifications. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Notifications. Notifications no. In-app messaging, yeah. And you did also use it. Yeah, or? I use it multiple times a week. Oh, well, <laughs> Actually, nice. At least, well, in my case, it's also because Albert Heijn is the closest supermarket to my home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, do, I can relate to the issue of the lack of English option, but I, to be honest, don't run into that issue too much, but I've also been in the Netherlands for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in this case, 
I think, at least for me, the bonus box is just a ah, it's a plus. Ah. <laughs> okay. In terms of in terms of just the dopamine release with. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So now we need to explain for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I think. What is, what is this thing? I think uh, first of all, maybe it's good to say that bonus box. I don't know what languages you all speak, but might sound a bit weird, and I think it would be something like surprise box uh, in uh, English. Um, but what is uh, important to understand is what I said in the beginning, you have, we have the mass promotions that are offered like across all stores and all um, uh, uh, online channels, and then we have the specialized offers, and that's why I'm going to talk about now, because the specialized offers are only accessible via the app, so you have to download the app, which is of course very interesting for us, but also for the client, but also for us as a company. And um, what's also good to know is that they um, are based on your transaction, so they are really uh, high. They have high, like a high value for people because it's yeah based on your own transaction. And even more important to understand, I think, is that they are available every week. So every week, what you do is go to the first, the like, do, click on the app, and you go to click on the bonus box, like on the home screen. And then you see some uh, like 15 or something uh, personalized offers, which are all based on your transactions. And then you can you have to actively like activate them. So once I do that, then the uh, uh, orange uh, um, check mark <laughs> will appear, and then this discount is automatically added to your account. Um, so yeah, I think that's a really interesting way to um, have the customers engage in our app and then and they come back every week. Um, yeah, and yeah, so it's really important for us that, that they keep on using that. And that's why we, how we use in-app messaging. Um, I think you can go yeah, to course, Yeah, and of course the, the gamification element is really, really important and, and how it works. Um, and in terms of what you discover each week, and then how you redeem it in, 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 in store. Yeah. Um, so I guess yeah, the big you know once we've said that. So obviously this this feature of the app is driving like you know much higher uh, conversion usage, and, and all KPIs are better than uh, users not not using the feature. So obviously the name of the game is how do we drive as many people to the feature using it, and obviously how do we how do we make sure that people that are actually using the app but not engaging with the feature. Are being uh, driven driven back to it, so that's the that's the campaign uh, we wanted uh, we wanted to focus on. Maybe Ali, you wanna yeah. walk us uh, through yeah. how so, you set up that campaign? Yeah, sure. Um, so now now you I think uh, kind of understand what the bonus box is and how important it is for us to that people actively come back. And um, what we did is. Um, no, what our goal was uh, actually is to let people come back. But if you send a campaign, maybe you have experience, it's uh, sometimes uh, you only boost it during that week, so you only boost engagement during that week, but the weeks after, the effect do does not really remain. And that's actually what you want, right? We want not only like a boost in bonus box activations in the week of the campaign, but also the weeks after. So uh, therefore, we try to set up this I think you can so go one back. We, one back? Yeah, Which this one. one? Uh, yeah, this yeah. one. Is okay. uh, there, there, that's why we set up this campaign. And um, it was available on the home screen. So everyone that uh, opened the home screen um, saw the message. But what we did was a reactivation campaign. So um, people that use the bonus book, so they know what it is, they have activated, they maybe even bought something. But they did not do that in the past four weeks. So we want to reactivate them. And um, um, so that's the, the people where we send the message to. Uh, they open the app, haven't used it in four weeks, and then this in-app message appears and say, says something like, especially for you, every week's uh, personalized offers. And then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> So you have a quick KPI analysis? Yeah, so uh, we uh, set, we displayed, so not we sent, but with the 120, uh, 128 people at 20,000 people saw the in-app message, so they saw this message. And of that group, 25% clicked on the message. And you know, as you know, the benchmark is 13%. So this is high engagement on this uh, on this um, uh, mm -hmm. in-app message. Yeah. 
And uh, what was interesting also is that we saw that 22% of the uh, people who saw the message activated a uh, offer. So they went to the app, they saw the in-app message and they activated the offer in the app. And even 16% of the total group bought uh, a bonus box, personalized offer in the stores or online. But... But it's no, <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, we know marketers are usually uh, KPI hungry people. So we, we dived a little uh, deeper into the, the campaign results um, by exposing some of the post-click uh, cohort behavior we, we saw afterwards. Do you want to... Yeah. 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 So... Um, as I, well, I'm gonna stand here. Yeah. As I said, like before, um, we sent so we sent in a message, but uh, we didn't only want effect, or we wish we had the hope that there was not only effect in the week of the campaign, but you already see that there is a high increase in the blue line is uh, offer activations, so people who uh, activated, and the yellow line is redemption, so people who actually bought something, and um, what is Super interesting, yeah, I think. And, yeah. and you know, I, I was just going to uh, underline that again. We're talking about people that are using the app on a regular basis, but simply not engaging with the bonus box. Yeah. And these are the effects of just driving them back to the feature. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So th that's for sure. And what's interesting to see here is this is the week of the campaign, but you see that the effect remained in the weeks after. So the in-app message had not only effect in the week of the campaign, but also in the weeks after. So yeah, super interesting, I, I think. And if you want to get even more, uh, even more granular. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. As a supermarket, it's you. Ha we have like campaigns every week, and we run them on all different market channel, like television, uh, all kinds of marketing channel, mail, and um, it's always very hard to say if, in this case, the in-app message is the one that resulted uh, the um, uh, the figures that we just saw. It was it not maybe an email or something on television? So. To understand that, we um, uh, analyzed the behavior in the uh, hours after that people saw, so really saw, the in-app message. And you see that here they, the in-app message was sent, and in the, from the moment it was sent until like two hours after, the most um, activations were done. So the, we can conclude that the in-app message had a direct effect on the, um, on the bonus box activations. But then, also, of course, it's always nice to know if, if it uh, has led to revenue. And therefore, we dived even a bit deeper in the, in the data. And we, uh, we uh, try to understand if, if and when people are buying those offers. And here you again see that the moment that the in-app message was sent, uh, so people 120K so, saw it. And then on the same day, the zero one, 10% uh, of the total test group actually bought a bonus box item in the stores. And there's also an effect in the days after, but it's interesting to see that it's in top of uh, mind uh, of our customers when they uh, go to the stores. So, so people basically jumping out of their couch with their app in the hand to run to a store. That's the, that's the behavior. Cool, awesome. Um, maybe I, so we're getting to the, we're nearing the end of the use case, maybe a, a quick, uh, Quick word of a uh, conclusion, uh, Ari, and maybe maybe Niels as well, who works in Ari's team. You want to add something at, at the end uh, in terms of uh, key takeouts. But so these are the final uh, final points we wanted to highlight. If you want to, yeah. Uh, so um, well. Uh, in that messaging, like I just said, it's uh, we started two years ago, and it helped us to uh, grow our app our active app database to 3.8 million active users. So uh, that's really helpful. But I think actually, to be honest, like our core belief at Albert Heijn is to offer the best shopping experience. And that's, that's why, yeah, that's what we want to deliver to our customers. And I think using this in-app message, in message and being relevant in the customer journey, uh, being able to, uh, to communicate one-on-one -on -one with our customers, um, really improves our customer experience. And also, of course, increase the value of our own channels, as I, as I mentioned before. And um, 
I think we also maybe shortly discussed the standard and custom events uh, that are offered by Batch, which made it really easy to uh, implement um, uh, the campaigns without a lot of help of uh, our data teams or product teams or whoever is uh, normally needed in the process. So, cool. yeah. Awesome. Well, Arlie, thank you very much for this presentation. Any questions or remarks for, uh, for Arli? I can see one hand over there. <laughs> yeah. You will? You will yeah. use it now? Or? <laughs> I definitely will. We have will. a heavy yeah. user in the room. That's great. Um, but in this case, I'm just more curious. With the um, uh, numbers that you present, are they identified specifically to in-app messaging? Or did the other um, promotive, promotional uh, efforts uh, play play part? For example, because I know from my own experience that I go to the supermarket on a Monday, I know that I need to open my app, activate my offers in the store. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't always happen, of course, in, at yeah. home. But afterwards, when you go to, for example, use a self-scanner, there's the, these little devices that you can beep, yeah. they repeat to you what you have in your bonus box. Yeah. Does that have, uh, what, does that have F an effect, an effect. Uh, on the numbers that are presented, or yeah. are these... Uh, isolated to just in that Yeah, good question. I think um, uh, this campaign was sent was a reactivation campaign. So uh, let's uh, imagine that you uh, use your bonus box, you are on Monday in the stores, and uh, but you haven't checked it for four weeks. That's w when this is sent. So um, therefore, I think that the numbers that you saw and the activations that were done after could really um, be um, uh, connected with the in-app message. Because if we would send it to everyone, then it would make not a lot of sense to a lot of people. For example, you maybe who use it very regularly. So that's, all, uh, that's what we're really trying to do, be relevant to our customers and communicate the right message to the customers. Yeah, but I meant more the, the I think it was the cohort slide. Yeah. yeah. So the actual redemptions of the offer. Yeah. Because in that situation, even if it's a reactivation campaign, I can see some scenarios in which, when uh, presented with an in-app message, this, the reiteration of these offers on the scanner, for example, helps yeah. and contributes. But then, do you measure that somehow? Do you know the um, attribution? Or? We we didn't do that for this analysis. Um, but even if uh, it's shown on those, uh, um, like the scanners uh, uh, or other um, um, digital solutions that we offer, we do still see like an increase in. So even though maybe so maybe the scanner help, but we do see like that they come back, and I think that's important. And um, maybe there was a, a scanner like somewhere here, but still they kind of, yeah, are remembered like, hey, do you still know the, the bonus book? So, uh, yeah, there I think it helps. There has to be a data scientist somewhere in your team <laughs> that knows the answer. Yeah. Right, you need to. Yeah, no, but I, and also I, I don't think it matters that much because um, the most important thing is a behavioral change and that we saw after the message. And if they are um, are remembered again by, by, by one of our digital uh, uh, scanners, mm -hmm. Fine. That's, I think, only better. Okay, thank you. Um, what's your reason for not automatically giving the offers to the users so they have to go in and activate it? The reason why I ask is American Express have exactly the same thing, and it really winds me up that I have to go and activate it. Because I always find out, like, hey, I've got 10% off a hotel that I've already booked. And that winds me That actually provides a negative experience. So why don't you just activate it for customers? Because Tesco's do that in the UK. Yeah, but I, uh, I think, um, uh, good question, by the way. Um, and uh, I think that um, if, you, if it would be offered automatically, let's say you have this 15 uh, offers, personalized offer, and it is offered to you automatically, you have the chance that people don't know that. So uh, having them to activate that, to, uh, to having them to activate the offers every week make, makes it on top of their mind, right? So they, they know like, okay, I've activated something, maybe I want to buy it. Maybe they were not even planning to buy it, but now it's in the bonus box and you activate it. Uh, and I go to the store, maybe I do actually buy it. Sorry? Maybe you go as in maybe you guys actually make more money by him booking it without the discount. 
Ja, ja, <laughs> fair enough. Ja, yeah, ja. Yeah. But and we and we have the discounts, like the mass uh, promotions are offered to everyone. So even if you don't have the app, you can make use of promotions within Albert Heijn. Yeah. Do we have any any more questions? Yeah, one in the I back. I just want to understand: is Batch UI a software? I'm sorry, what? Is, is ba Batch UI? Is Batch UI a software? Yeah, it is. No, absolutely. Uh, if we haven't made it, uh, you know, clear enough in the, in the beginning, I, I went. Maybe I went a little quickly in the presentation, but it is a software as a service platform on which marketers log in every day. Uh, this is this is a snapshot of the UI as well. On the right, this is where Ali and his and her team um, add their apps, uh, review their campaign, create any kind of message, and then track all of the performance. Um, of those those campaigns. So yeah, you go to batch.com uh, or just uh, hit us up and if you want a quick demo afterwards, uh, happy to show you the interface, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, any any other questions? Uh, if you want to continue the conversation, so Adli is here with Niels at the back um, and then the batch team is here as well, James and Marjolin and I. We have a booth by the entrance, just uh, hit us up. Um, I think we can probably call it a day for today. Thank you, Ali, again. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.